So well, welcome to the September 9th, uh, another one of our neighbor council meeting. We're going to uh, do a roll call. We're going to start from uh, my right with John. John Brady. Dan Denver, Tony Boyce, Tony Gillard. Stephen Pasek Philly. Right, Phil's our vice president of the Union Energy Protocol, and I don't have it, and I don't know, I don't have it memorized, so I apologize. But basically, what we do is we have our applicants present. We open the meeting to um, the council members first, then we open it up to people in the audience, butters in particular, and then we uh, take a poll and we vote by a show of hands. We use Robert's rules, in case you're wondering. Okay, um, and I apologize for not having a college share. Um, Nicole Leo from Neighborhood Services, any, any, um, hello? And Maria from, Representative Michael, which is office, is here also, I think, right now? Oh, no. How long? Senator Petroselli. Rep. Mike Woods is here in spirit. Um, I don't see anyone from Council on Martinez's office. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the community reports and I'm, I'm going to start with uh, Brian Kennedy. We're supposed to have the commissioner for transportation here today, but there was a scheduling conflict, so number eight on our agenda is not going to be here. He's going to be here next month at our October meeting, but I'm going to give Brian a minute to get uh, to work. Sure. Uh, as Stephen said, he, um, Commissioner Timlin uh, canceled on us actually this morning after knowing about the meeting for over a month and a half. Uh, we're disappointed that he's not here to address parking issues in the neighborhood. I apologize to anyone who came out tonight to uh, ask him questions, and we're hoping to get him here for the October meeting. Um, I had a whole list of, of questions to ask him, but him not being here, there's one issue that I did want to point out, um, and that was a, a, an incident that took place on Friday, August 9th, um, uh, the week before for the first for the feast from August 2nd to 4th. There was uh, these signs that were hung up all along Commercial Street, basically from Waterfront Cafe to uh, to Battery Street. As you can see, it says no stopping in time Friday through Sunday. And right below it said August 2nd through 4th. Um, the cars were all properly flagged 72 hours beforehand. People moved their cars. Um, then the feast afterwards, Friday, August 9th, I came out uh, on my way to work and I noticed that these same signs from the week before were still up. Um, I got no, told, by the way. What's that? I got Did you told. Get told? And, okay. the, and I told them that the signs were mislabeled. So I came out Friday morning. Noticed that hadn't changed the signs. I said, "Oh, that's kind of weird, considering you know they they did this last week for the feast. Why not do it this week?" Um, and then I came home at Friday at seven at night, and all those cars, there was probably fourteen cars, Damien's was one of them, were, to, were towed or being towed. So I, I went up to the uh, two gentlemen that were doing the towing from the Boston Transportation Department and asked why the cars hadn't been properly flagged and why they're now being towed without giving the proper notice. Um, I was told that someone involved with the feast that weekend also worked for the city, for the Boston Transportation Department, and uh, told them to tow all the cars. But they're clever enough to rip off the bottom part that said August 2nd through 4th. So you would assume that it was for actually this following weekend. Um, I made a call to the mayor's office, um, you know, explain the situation. I, I didn't have a dog in the fight, my car was not towed but uh, explain the situation that as it was occurring um, and mayor mayor's hotline never got back to me so i encourage anyone who was told that day friday august 7th to or i'm sorry friday august 9th to contact the boston transportation department as well as the mayor's office and, and seek reimbursement for that time sure. again i just want to reinforce what, what ryan said first commissioner timbling had an appointment with us today and I'm going to be a little bit more planned. He blew us off. He decided not to show up. Okay, at last minute. You know, which I find it to be, uh, you know, quite insulting since this issue that we've been talking about parking, you know, thing, a signage and stuff like that over a year and a half old that haven't been resolved yet. So, Commissioner Tilly should realize that he is a public servant and when the public meets his, makes an appointment with him, we expect him to show up. Thank you. Um, public safety. Um, David Mox is going to get and Marie is going to read the uh, public safety report just to really. Hi, everyone. Um, so, the August 2013 public safety report, we have the numbers 276 people signed the petition that Stephen and um, a couple of others started about getting more police presence in the neighborhood. So, as of August 1st, there were 276 signatures. Part 1 crime reported by the BPD for District Area 1 from January 1st to July 22nd was down 13, 11% from 
compared to the same time a year ago. There were five robberies this year, seven total arrests in July 2013, three North End people for drug fights at Hanover and Cross Street, etc. There was a large fight at Commercial and Foster Street on July 28, 2013 at 12.40 a.m. in which a large group of teenagers, aged 18 to 22, from Chelsea, Tuxbury, and Wilmington, throwing bottles and cans, and they were allegedly involved earlier in an altercation that evening involving knives and bats. For the September Public Safety Report, there were 32 fewer Part 1 crimes in the North End this year, again January through August, compared to the same period last year. Two extra gang cars were added to the police patrols after the first thieves per resident request. There were 15 to 20 field stops, warnings made by Boston police in the North End during the feast, moving teenagers out of cops late at night. And there were five loud party related calls made to the police from Thursday, August 29th through Sunday, September 1st. Larcenies not including car breaks, 10 more over the last 30 days compared to the same period last year, mostly high end bicycles and iPhones. There were at least four arrests in August 2013, non North End residents disorderly conduct, drugs, open and gross lewdness. Five losses for motor vehicles down from 15 compared to the same period last year. So, yeah, that's a public safety report. Motor David's absence. You know something, Amy, I need to recognize you here from the Greenway, um, Amy Dwyer, um, which brings me to the Greenway report, which John Craig usually um, has uh, some info for us. Yes, I do. All right, so, um, and as Stephen said, thanks again for being here. Um, for the carousel, it just opened uh, recently. The rides are $3 each. A book of 10 tickets is 25. They accept cash and credit. It's open till the end of August, um, 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. Sunday through Thursday, and it's extended till nine on Fridays and Saturdays. Uh, in the first three days, they sold over 6,000 tickets, and it's really nice, so I suggest it. Uh, the end of October, sorry. Uh, and in the first three days of operation, they sold over 6,000 tickets. It's really nice. I suggest you go down there. Just a quick note about programming. We talked a little bit about this last uh, month, but we've had over 50 events in North End Parks over the summer. Um, a few were city sports who had the weekly CrossFit classes in Parcel 8. We had the um, Ali Baldessari, had the Pilates classes, and the Berkeley Concert Series were also over there. And as we also expressed uh, last month, we've had as a response to the community meeting this a few months ago umbrellas have been in there um, for a few weeks now I guess right and then uh, we also replaced the tables and chairs which had a lot of added wear and tear so that was great and um, finally the mural in Dewey Square which you may or may not like mostly probably don't like but in any case that's coming down this week and will be replaced next week so I uh, look forward to seeing what new public art will be there do you have anything else to add or? No, I think um, the carousel will close full time in October. It'll be open on weekends. Oh, okay. Hopefully, right. it'll be open for first. In the winter? Night. Yeah. yeah. Until first night, and then January first, we'll button it up until April. But we're hoping the weekends, weather permitting, till January first. And we are looking forward to the mural going up. Um, Matthew Ritchie is a contemporary artist who's uh, uh, from Britain originally, but is um, based out of New York, and that will go up um, beginning next week. Yeah, I've been taking this one down this week. Carousel is awesome if you have kids. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, we're going to start the agenda, but just just real quick, um, just for the record, I, I, I want to make sure I state this. Um, you know, people disappointed. The commissioner of transportation isn't here. He was going to send someone in his place. We didn't feel that we wanted to speak to anyone other than the commissioner, so that's why we decided to bring him in um, next month because we would like to speak to the commissioner and, and, and not a deputy commissioner or some. Uh, Community uh, relations uh, employee of the transportation department. So um, he did offer. I just want to make that. I don't. I don't want people to think he just totally blew us off. But um, we're going to have him here next month. He will be here um, the day after Columbus Day. I don't know the date, but he will be here. All right. So Six Foster Street is first, and that's MG Montmany LLC. Seeing there's only barriers to change the policy in the three families and four. Uh, good evening, Bill Ferrolo, representing uh, Anthony Lagetti, who's uh, to my left. And to his left is uh, Michael Belarusso, who uh, is 
contractor that's involved in this proposal. Uh, many of you probably know Anthony and his family. They have uh, been not their residents uh, for a very long time. And they're property owners uh, in the lot of them. Uh, I believe currently four, five, five, five buildings uh, under their ownership uh, uh, in the lot of them. I've raised that because he's an uh, active landlord. He's not an active landlord. Uh, very familiar with his properties and his tenants. So he recently, in January of this year, purchased uh, Six Foster Street. Uh, Six Foster is approximately halfway down Foster. If you're coming from Charter Street, it'll be on the left-hand side of Foster. Uh, and sits closer to the middle uh, of Foster Street. Uh, what uh, is the situation here is four and six Foster, uh, three-story buildings that uh, abut each other. Uh, four is owned by Keith Burt, the uh, The buildings on either side of that are one or more stories taller than these two buildings. Uh, and uh, the street goes downhill towards commercial. Uh, and even with that, the next building uh, to this is 12. That's separated, <coughs> separated by a small uh, yard that actually has a name, uh, which uh, I can only learn today is, uh, I believe it's pronounced Phipps uh, Court. But it's a small yard about uh, maybe eight feet wide that separates uh, this building six from the building at 12. Uh, the building at 12, as I mentioned, is, uh, is one story uh, taller than this building. Uh, the, proposal is to do two things with this property. One is to take a, a vacant basement and use half of it for common area, uh, which you will see in the plans, <coughs> that include uh, laundry area for storage, and the other half of the basement to be used as part of the first floor apartment. The first floor apartment currently is uh, somewhere around 320 square feet, very small. This would uh, allow that apartment to be approximately 600 square feet uh, when it's finished. The second floor unit is uh, 377 square feet. The third floor unit is also 377 square feet. The fourth floor unit, which is the proposed addition, would be a little bit larger at 525 because you wouldn't lose the space for the common stairway, et cetera. Now takes you up to the upper floor. So uh, the new floor of the building would be roughly the size of the building itself, 525 square feet. So the entire lot is 544, 543, I should say, square feet. I don't want to confuse you. Uh, the significance is it takes up the whole lot and very little uh, area on each floor. That's the reason that Anthony would like to completely rehab this building make it a sprinkler building up to code, the fire code, uh, and <clears throat> make these units uh, in a much better condition than they currently are uh, as of the time of this purchase. The uh, proposal that we have before you, uh, let me give you some, some heights. The existing height of the building today is 34, 34 feet from the roof line. And it has a head house at the rear of that roof that accesses the existing roof. Right now, the existing roof is just a uh, rubber roof that has no decking on it. Uh, the proposal is to add a floor to the building, which would make the roof line 41 feet, 8 inches, uh, and to put a roof deck uh, on that, uh, that roof uh, that's limited to be used by the top floor unit only. That would also have a head house uh, identical in size to the head house that exists today, but up one level. Uh, the access to uh, the roof is only by that, that one unit, and it's by the head house that's in the rear, uh, lined up with where the head house would be today. Uh, Mr. Burton, who owns four, has re recently redone his building. He's talked to Anthony, etc. He came to zoning and licensing committee to review the plans with us. Uh, the 
was talking to us about issues about construction, etc. But uh, he hasn't raised any objection. And as a matter of fact, since these buildings are nearly mirror images, he's also looking at the potential that he may do the same. He uses his building as a one family uh, currently. And um, uh, this building was purchased uh, in January, as I mentioned, uh, from uh, Herb Cohen, who owns the two buildings directly across from this on Foster Street. So uh, he supported this as well. Uh, 12 is owned by a fellow by the name of Draw Ashore, uh, A-S-H-U-A-H. I spoke to Drawer uh, myself, and uh, he was going to speak to his wife to see if there was any issues that she had. He had to get back uh, from that meeting. Uh, so I have given you copies of the plans. I've given you the refusal letter of the appeal. And I've given you uh, the notice that we sent to all of the abutting property owners, as well as the residents of all those buildings uh, on the street, as well as uh, on Charter Street. The last building, Rock Foster, was actually a Charter Street entry building that runs behind it. So uh, we notified all of those individuals. Uh, I think so. Thank you. The fourth floor, are you going to live in the fourth floor? Is that the big window? It's all going to be my building. Yes. There's no plans for any parking whatsoever, I see. There's no parking. Uh, uh, people may be aware of uh, Foster Port has that area there that the city took what used to be a parking uh, playground that wasn't used and allows it now for residents to park. So Most of my tenants do not have vehicles. But there's no place on site for parking. That's why there's no no, I know. I just, as, as we've discussed, there's always a parking issue, and we're now we're adding an additional story. With right, and you're adding an additional unit that's in that five room right. space. So, so the, the state case it goes up to the it goes up to the, the top unit, and then the, the, um, the roof that was only occupied by unit four. You, you can it, only access it from that unit. Can I ask a question too? Uh, you manage your properties from here to the neighborhood. Do you have yes. an office here? Yeah. What's your office? Three old two notch. It's really there five days a week. Being very busy. Seven days. So seven days. Yes. Um, another, in other words, nobody can use that with that. Just, just uh, um, that you, that. yes. So it isn't for everybody. No, no, no. You, you no. Exclusively? And they can't get to it either. It's, they'd have to go through the uh, top unit and not to get to it. Since the building has sprinklers, they they don't have to have a means of egress by going through the door. So how many bedrooms are on the top floor? These are all ones. One. They're all ones. They're all ones in the top? Yes. Right, Mike? Yeah, they yes, I'm just going to feed. Yeah, yeah. one bedroom. Yeah. Anthony, in, in the past, it's been the policy of basically, you know, we, we try to avoid having roof decks on buildings that don't have private access to an owner occupied unit. A absolutely. Would, would you be opposed to us making or supporting this, this project if there were no deck? Sure. I think I would be it. Yeah. I mean, it's out of necessity. Yeah, I, I, absolutely, Tony. I'm it's, not. It's, it's just, it's, it's been a problem. No, I, I, I totally, and, I, I, I know. know where you guys are coming from. All my properties that I do have, decks are all private decks, so only those people can go out there. And I laid a law down my tenants. I don't, I, I don't, we, we've never had a problem. Never. Right? I, I, I laid. Maybe, maybe, Anthony, that, you know, I, I think that the project, is, is fine. Yeah, but I'm, I'm, have, I'm cool with that. But, but maybe, maybe like in a couple of years, if things work out with this property and, and you know, maybe things settle down in this neighborhood and people aren't attacking us for, for giving permission for roof mm -hmm. decks, then you know, maybe. But a absolutely. Yes. Yeah, I, yeah. Yeah. I can understand. It, there's pluses and minuses, meaning just to illustrate uh, the flat roof that will exist on the building is accessed by that unit. Now, we can put things in leases to other people that they can't use the roof. It doesn't you know, put a chain on your leg and keep them from going up the roof. Uh, why do I say that? Sometimes 
a roof deck that is fenced, etc., is a much safer circumstance than one that's just a plain flat roof. Right. Now, I, I know we have all the problems we have, and I, I couldn't bring you more about roof decks and cottons. The question becomes, in a situation like this, it is pluses and there's minuses as far as having it and not having it. Right. So. And, and, and we, we discussed this earlier before, um, before you all came in, and the thing is that because your building is sprinkled and it doesn't actually need roof access, then you can actually lock the door and it's, you're not, like put one you're of not, on. You're not yeah. in, a, a, in violation of the fire code. You, can put a, you don't even have to because if, if nobody need go up the roof, then you can actually keep it locked. There's no emergency that you would need to go up the roof if there's a sprinkler system in the building, correct? I don't know if the fire code will allow you. I no, no, even not, even it's not not an egress. I don't know if that's a line of law. If it's all, if it's all occupied, that there means a egress. So I don't, I don't think you. Would no, I I don't know the answer. You, know, you have to keep in mind too. You get a lot of trouble. You have an apartment that has the only access to the roof without a railing on it. You know what I mean? I, 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 you know, it's it's. it's I don't Is know. it a flat roof building? Or are you saying it's, it's not? It's not a flat. Mm -hmm. right. So it, it's a, it, again, it's not that the people sitting here don't understand the roof deck issue. Uh, you know, we, we live here, we know what it's like, etc. I'm just saying that uh, the double whammy involved in these things is that people get up on decks, uh, on roofs I should say. Uh, you know, we've seen it a couple of times already here in the neighborhood where you know, people have fallen off the end of the street and they get where else they come up with falling off the street. Can I ask a question? If, when, you lease, when you lease an apartment with a, with a, with a, with a roof deck, Yes. Do you include the, the rules of the use of the, of the roof? I, I have a tenant come in my office and I talk to them about it and they're in each lease. Everything's in the lease. So you have instructions of what? Oh, absolutely. I, I have a lot of standards. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. But, but you want to understand yes. that, oh, that, totally that, that, that the, the proposal that's going to hit, hit, hit our, our table is that, you know, it's the expansion of the first floor into the basement, which I don't have a problem with. Mm -hmm. Then it's going to be the adding one story addition to the building, which I don't have a problem with. But it's the roof deck. But it comes as a package. So unless you remove the roof deck, then the package is maybe not that acceptable. Whereas if the roof deck is removed, then maybe the package is more acceptable. I have no problem with the roof deck. Does anyone else have a problem with the roof deck? <laughs> I, I think that's, that's what we're saying to you is the roof deck is going to make a break. Yeah. What Anthony is saying, the roof deck's not a big issue. If the board feels that they're more comfortable approving this project without the roof deck, we respect that. So, the well, I mean, in, in the past, I know that obviously no one showed up from the community, but in the past, we have gotten the last for approving the roof decks. Well, that's, that, that's the point I wanted to make is this. There's no one in the room opposing it, Tony. There's no, they all got their notification. They're not here. Maybe no one's asking any questions about it. So it would be very difficult for anybody to, to give you guys backslash for approving it. Oh, and I can tell you right now, we're probably going to go before zoning asking for well, it. Well, excuse me. I don't think Tony speaks for all of us. I think that we haven't made a decision on how we're going to vote. We haven't made a motion to vote. So and, and she's yeah. putting out a message. That's fine. The rest of us need to make our, our own decision on how we're going to vote for this. Let's not be carried away, all right? So we understand her point, and now let's carry on. Who's next to speak and take it to the, to the audience if that's what it is? We will well, any, any, any council member, any other, hold on. Any, sure. Anyone else have any questions? Do you have a question, Mary? Oh, I, I, can, I can see uh, Tony's point. I can see the point. Because, I mean, yeah, there could be a, a couple that can rent that apartment and excuse me, they're both that can buy 40 couples. Now you've got a wild party. Yeah, but 500 square feet, it's great to have to split 40 people, 80 people. Yeah. I think she's just, I don't know, 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 I think the point she's trying to make is that it may escalate. I'm not saying that's what's going to happen, but. I don't think we can let a couple of bad apples spoil the bunch. That's, that's our opinion, that's why we vote, by a show of hands, and the majority will win when we vote. Does anyone else have a question? John, you have a question? Oh, no, I was just saying. Okay. I have a comment, I'm sure. 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 The common is, it seems like uh, every time something goes bad in this neighborhood, we tend to give the people who have made this neighborhood and who are good people, good solid landlords, we tend to, you know, maybe not give them the opportunity after all they've shown us and proven in the neighborhood. So I, 
I don't see why you guys would have a problem with the roof deck that's only accessible to the tenant and that you have a landlord that says, hey, these are the rules right here. They're written and I'm giving to you verbally. He's a responsible guy. You guys never have any problems. So I think we should all be taken as individuals and not make a group thing like no more roof decks. No more roof decks for absentee landlords that don't care about the neighborhood. I'm with that one. That's all I have to say. Anyone else any questions? No, but it's, it's a difficult distinction to make. Yes. I, mean, oh, it you know, it's, I mean, it's, it's you know, the, the other thing that we get blamed for all the time is favoritism. And that's, you know, we take, we take a lot of hits. I mean, we take a lot of comments and we take a lot of reviews for, for you know, the decisions that we make here. And this is not an easy position and it's not, it's not easy to sit here and you know try to help the community and do what's best for the community. It's not it's not that simple. Favoritism if the person who's applying for it has a questionable character in the past. But when someone's an upstanding uh, member of the community, was, I don't think you can cite favor I'm sorry, I'm talking. I don't think you can cite favoritism. Please let me, please let me finish. I think it's ridiculous, Stephen, that I had to a guy like that. I'm sorry. That's my opinion on the time. Excuse me, Sal DiGirolamo, uh, Mount Dan resident. I, I think the point that Michael made is uh, a very strong point. There's no one here opposing it. There's no one that lives in that area opposing it. And, you know, I, I can understand that the position you're in is a difficult one. You know, with not Dan residents that get upset with some of the decisions you make. But like when you took the position, like you kind of like knew that was going to be happening. You know, I like to say you're, in, you're in a position that that's difficult. So you can't satisfy, you know, everybody. And I agree. This with is you. this I, is a I, guy I, I, that that's a hands-on landlord. It's not well, like he's. I agree with you. Listen, we we we, 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 I, I, we we totally understand where you're coming from. We we. On Fleet Street, we had a common roof deck that we legally put on the roof and we had it. And we never had any problems and we removed it because of the new tenant uh, uh, stampede in the neighborhood. Because we don't know who we're going to get. They come in with their parents and they sign leases and everybody's happy. And before you know, we got a full-blown body on the roof, right? So we removed that roof deck. So we understand the whole idea behind the common roof deck problem and, and, and your, the point that you guys are trying to make as a board to say, hey, look, we take a lot of heat for approving things that people don't want, right? But like, like uh, Billy said, the gentleman next door who's a single family owner, right? He renovated the building, I believe he went through your office at the time. He's a nice enough guy. He's also engaged in, in talking about, also he has a roof deck that was approved, right? Because he's a single family owner occupant and I totally understand and I'm all for that as well. He is also gonna go for the addition so that we can make them true sister buildings and look attractive from the street and attractive from his what would be a valley now because if we build up he's got a higher building on the other side of him so now he'll be buried on his roof then so when he comes before you board, he's going to ask for a roof deck and you're going to have to give it to him as an owner occupant and then now we don't have sister buildings anymore we don't have our roof deck and he got hits so we really ask you to just approve the roof deck. Okay. i just want to get i want to get back i just want to make 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 one point all of this i think uh I'm getting a little confused now. But, but we're not we're not here to, to tell you that you're not a good landlord because you are a good landlord and my grandmother's a landlord and you're a very good landlord. Thank you. And I don't care what people think about how I vote on an issue. I vote how I feel. And if people don't like my vote, then every May they come in here, they vote against me if they don't think I do the right thing by the neighborhood. I do everything I can. When I when I vote, I don't vote as the president, I'm going to vote at a time. But so there's two arguments to everything. I, I understand Tony's argument, I understand George's argument, I can kind of feel where the guys are going here. My point is, yeah, we send out letters of notice, and I believe wholeheartedly that Billy notified all of these abutters, because he's very thorough and he does a good job, and that's just a fact. Billy is very thorough. Um, but you made a comment like we're going to go to the Zoning Board of Appeals anyways and apply for the roof deck, whether we go for it or against so it. I understand that, but if, 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 if I mean, the other, the other question is, if you have so much support, then you know, we have a stack of, of, of letters from our butts, which I'm not asking you for, because I'm, I'm, I'm taking you out your word that you notify these people so they be here. Personally, do I have a question? Do I have a problem with roof decks? 
No, I don't have to run occupy. Buildings can get sold too. You can turn around next year, sell the building, and we don't know who owns the building. So that's why we ask these questions. Mm -hmm. And we're, it's our job to ask these no, questions. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm, I'm I thought always, this was going to be a simple request tonight, to be no, honest. No, I'm only going to repeat what I said before. The, the roof deck doesn't make or break this project. In other words, we thought the roof deck was a nice accommodation for that particular unit. But we respect the job you have to do, and we will respect the vote that you take. Meaning, if the majority feel that the roof deck isn't a problem yet, great. If the majority feels that the roof deck is a problem, we go to the roof. So, whichever way you vote, we'll follow the other. Can I just say one thing? I just want to go back to what Billy said before. If you have a roof deck, whether it's a legal roof deck or a not legal roof deck, roof. people are going on the roof. Yeah. I just saw it <laughs> an hour ago across the way from yeah. me. People were on the roof. It's not a legal roof. So I would rather have someone have a legal roof that's Protected. safe yeah. than have these kids Oh, the doing all crazy things on these roofs. And, and it's going to happen eventually. It is going to happen because I just saw it just saw it an hour ago. It happened just recently. But someone's going down you know, all the way. You time. know, unfortunately, someone, you know, could get hurt. By the way, a nice, a nice, so it's a 40 something year old couple. The kids are in college. They bought a nice condo unit with a roof deck. It happened 20 couples over, 40 couples over for their party. So that's just, it's like. So we're kind of balancing what we all want. We all want everybody to be safe and sound and happy and able. It's very difficult to do. It's a big difference between the and the Not all the time. Not all the time. Most of the time, but not all the time. Does anyone want to make a motion? Does anyone else have any questions? I have to make a motion. I have to make a motion to support the petition as it's asked. In uh, seeking a uh, showing variation to change the occupancy from a three family dwelling to a four family, the first four unit will be expanded into the basement, and the new one story addition with the roof deck uh, will uh, create the four units. Does anyone Thank second? So there's, any, there's a motion on the floor. Does anyone second the motion? Second. second. So there's a motion on the floor by George, it was second by Ryan and John, and it's to uh, seek a zoning variant. To seek a zoning variant to change the occupancy.